Hello everyone, today we're making a music Discord bot using Discord PY. The bot's going to include all of the most popular features such as playing, pausing, resuming, adding to queues, clearing the queues, skipping music, all of that good stuff. But first, we'll need to go through all of the setup. We'll need to download FFmpeg. And to do that, you'll go to ffmpeg.org slash download. I'll leave the link in the description. And just choose the operating system that you're on. I'm on Windows, and I'm just gonna choose the first link up here and download the full FFmpeg 7-zip file. Once downloaded, you can extract the file. You might need to download 7-zip as well in order to do this. But you just open with 7-zip file manager, extract here, and then just move this folder into any way you want. I'm gonna put it onto the C folder, but you, you, you can leave it in the downloads even if you want to. Now that we've got this FFmpeg downloaded, we need to actually add it to our environment variables. We'll type in environment variables for the system, edit environment variables, and where you see this path variable over here, we'll click on edit and scroll up to the bottom, click on new, and we'll just copy the path to the FFmpeg bin folder which for me is just cffmpeg bin. This is where your ffmpeg.exe is gonna be, like so. Leave it, and that's ffmpeg done. Next up, we'll need to download some dependencies. So the first dependency that we'll download is this called py. Next up, we'll want to download ffmpeg. And we'll also need to download pynacl. We'll now create the actual bot in the developer console. So head over to the Discord developer portal and then hit applications in the top left hand corner. From here, we'll create a new application and name it whatever you want. I'll just name it music bot, but it can be named whatever you like. Then we'll go to the bot section and click on add bot. Yes, do it. Now we'll want to copy the token and save it in a file because we're gonna be using it later on. Now go to the OAuth tab and in the authorization link, click on in-app authorization bots. We're just gonna give it admin rights for now, but if you want to actually deploy it to a lot of people, you'll probably want to just include the things that you're gonna be using. Now in the URL generator, we are going to select the bot administrator again, and this is gonna give us a link. Now copy that link and paste it in your URL bar. And this is just like any other bot that we just wanna to add to a channel. So we're just gonna select the bot channel. Continue, authorize. So that's all gone through. And when you go to Discord, you should see that we've got this bot. He's currently showing us offline because we haven't actually wrote anything, but he did actually join the channel. Back in VS Code, we're gonna add a new file called main.py and that's gonna be our entry point. And in here, we're gonna import a few libraries. The first one is gonna be Discord itself, and then we're gonna import commands from discord.xd. Next, we're gonna actually create the bot by saying bot equals commands.bot, and this is where we select the command prefix that we wanna use for our bot. In our case, we're just gonna use a slash, so every command is gonna be something like slash play or slash skip or slash leave, anything like that. Now, we're gonna import a cog that we haven't made yet, but we're gonna make in a minute and we're gonna name it music cog. And that will be a class that holds all of the functionality for our music bot. We'll want to add this to our bot by saying add cog, specifying the class. And we'll also create another cog that displays that help message at the beginning. And we'll just call it help cog for now. Okay, there we go. And lastly, in order to actually make the bot run, we're gonna say bot.run. And in here, we need to specify an environment variable and this environment variable is gonna hold a token. Don't worry about this for now too much, but when it comes to actually running the bot, I'll show you exactly how to set this environment variable up for you. Let's create the music cog class that's gonna actually have the functionality of the music bot. So let's make a new file called music cog. And inside of here, we'll need to import Discord and the uh, commands as well. Now, I just remembered I forgot to actually specify another library that we're gonna be using called YouTube DL, which we'll use to search YouTube for all of the songs that we actually wanna play. So we'll say pip install YouTube DL, and we'll import it saying YouTube DL, import YouTube DL. Right, so let's start writing out our class. I'm gonna explain a bit of what I've wrote out here. So this self.playing and self.is paused, we're gonna use these variables to 
specify the state that the bot is currently in, whether it's playing or whether it's paused during music. The music queue is gonna hold all of the music that we currently got in queue. YDL options and FFmpeg options, you don't really have to worry about. These are just some options for YouTube DL and FFmpeg to make sure that they're using the best quality and don't have any playlists or anything like that for YouTube DL because that's not gonna work with our music bot. And now we're gonna start actually defining some of the some of the functions for searching YouTube in order to find the music. So the search YT function is going to use YouTube DL to search for the music, which is done over here using the extract info and then this string. It's not gonna download the music, it's just gonna search for it and then return the entries and the URL for that piece of music. And we're gonna use that URL later to actually play the music from our Discord bot. The next function that we'll define is the play next function. So this play next function is just gonna play the next piece of music that's in queue. And it's we're gonna set the is playing to true because we're gonna be currently playing. We'll take the source of the next music in queue. Then we'll just stop playing the music using Discord FFmpeg, which is gonna take the options that we defined earlier. And then after it's finished playing, it's gonna start rerunning the function. So this is gonna be a recursive process. Once it finishes a piece of music, it's gonna call play next and then play next until we don't have any more music in the queue, at which point it's gonna say, we no longer have any more music so I'm just gonna stop playing and we're gonna exit. So this function takes care of playing music that's in the queue but we need to actually start it off somehow and this is where the play music function is gonna come into play. The play music function is gonna be the function that we first call when we type in slash play. That, that's gonna be the first function the music bot calls in order to play the music. So the first thing we do is we check if we've actually got some music in the music queue and then we'll again grab the source of the music and the difference between this function and the function above the play next function is that this function actually checks if we're in a voice channel and if we're not inside of a voice channel, which is this statement here, we're actually gonna to try to join a voice channel. And at the end, we're gonna check that we actually managed to join the voice channel. And if we didn't, we're gonna return a nice error message to the user. Or if we're currently in a channel, we're gonna to move to the channel that the user's actually in. So let's say we've got two channels here, a general channel and a uh, channel two. If we're in channel two and the bot is in the general channel, we want the bot to move to our channel to start playing the music in our channel. So this is what this move is going to do. And then the same thing that as we've done before, we're just gonna pop the music from the queue because we're currently playing it and we're gonna start playing it in the voice channel. Now it's time to define our first command and this will be the play command. We'll give it a help message of, we'll just say that it plays the selected song from YouTube and we want to give it a couple of aliases. So what aliases are is just different ways that you can call your command. So when the user types in play, we also want to run the same function when the user types in P for example. So we're just gonna define an alias of P or playing as our aliases. And the function has to take the context and the args that are passed in by the Discord PY library. This is probably the most complicated function in our whole music bot. So let's run through it nice and slow. The first thing we do is we want to grab the keyword that the user's actually searching for, and this is gonna be stored in our query variable. Then we want to find out if the user is currently connected to a voice channel. So we grab the channel that the user is currently connected to, and if it's none, which means they're not connected to any channel, we want to tell them to actually connect to a voice channel. Otherwise, we don't know what to draw. After that, we want to check if we're currently in a paused state for the music bot. So if the user decided to pause the music that's currently playing, we want to just resume whatever's playing and carry on from there. Lastly, if we've connected to the voice channel and we're not in a paused state, we want to actually find the music on YouTube. And this is where the search YT function that we defined earlier is gonna come into play. Now, after we found the music that we wanna play, we're going to tell the user that we've added the song to the queue, and if we're not currently playing, we're gonna start playing the music using the play music function that we defined earlier. And that is it. That is the most complicated part of this whole music bot. Now it's gonna be all downhill. So we'll want to define a pause function, and this function is fairly simple. If we're currently playing a song, we're just gonna set the is playing to false and is 
is pause to true and we're going to pause the current song that is currently playing by saying voice channel pause and if we're in a paused state we're just going to resume playing by saying is pause just resume. The next function naturally is going to be defining the resume function. We're pretty much repeating what this function above says and I just forgot to add these two variables right here. So we're just gonna flip the variables again and we're just gonna resume playing whatever currently is in the queue. Next function that we wanna define is the skip function. So if we've got a music that we don't really like, we want the user to be able to skip it. And this function again is fairly simple. If we're currently inside of a voice channel, then we just want to stop playing whatever we're currently playing. And we're just gonna call the play music function again, which as you recall earlier, just starts playing whatever the first music is inside of our queue. And then it's just gonna carry on playing the next songs in the queue from there on out. Another function you commonly see inside of music bots is the queue function, which simply displays all of the songs that are currently in the queue. In here, we just define an empty string at first, and then we're gonna loop through all of the songs that are currently in our queue. So if we only wanna display a maximum of four songs in the queue, because we don't wanna fill up the whole chat if we've got like 100 songs in our queue. We're just gonna grab the title of the song, and then we're gonna pass it back to the user using context.send, which just sends a message in Discord. Or if our queue is empty, we're just gonna say no music in the queue. We'll also want to define a clear command, which is just gonna clear all of the songs that are in the queue and stop the bot from playing. Firstly, we check if we're currently in a voice channel because if we're not, we don't really have to do anything. And if we are and we're playing, we're just gonna stop playing whatever we are. Then we're gonna clear the music queue by just sending it to an empty list. And we're gonna give a nice message back to the user saying that we've cleared the queue. The last command that we wanna do is the leave command, which is gonna kick the bot from the voice channel. Before disconnecting, we just want to set the is playing and this pause to false. And once that's done, we're just going to leave the voice channel by saying disconnect. Now we're going to define a helper cog that's going to display all of the help messages to the user and that first message that the user sees with all the commands at the start. So we'll name our file help cog. And now we'll define our help cog class. And we're going to use the triple quotes for nice and easy formatting and triple backticks are gonna give it this nice formatting inside of Discord where it looks sort of like code, but it just stands out a bit nicer. I'm just gonna quickly write out all of the commands over here. We'll need to define a list that's gonna hold all of the text channels so that we can send the help message at the start to all of the text channels, not just the one, because some Discord channels have many different text channels. So the first command that we're going to define is the command that's going to run when the music bot first comes online. And we're going to use a listener for that. This onReady function has to have the name onReady because that's a listener which specifies that this function is going to run whenever the music bot first comes online. So first thing we do is we cycle through all of the guilds in our main channel and then we're just going to look for all of the text channels inside of that and we're going to append it to our list. Once we've done that, we're simply going to send a message to all of the text channels using the send to all method that we're going to define in a second. And this send to all method is really simple. We're just gonna cycle for all of the text channels and send a message in each of them. The reason why I defined it in a separate method rather than having it inside of here is because you might wanna use it for sending different messages over here. It doesn't just have to be the helper message. You might wanna extend the bot to do something more. So the very last function that we need to define is the help command. And this help command is simply going to send the help message to the current text channel that we're in. Now, I forgot one last thing that we need to do inside of our main.py, and that is to disable the default help command. Otherwise, this help command that we define in the help.cog is not going to work. Right, so we finished writing all of the codes. The last thing to do is to actually run it. So remember how we define this environment variable called token. This is how you actually define an environment variable, on Windows at least. On Mac, you might need to just search it up. I'm not exactly sure how you do it, but it will be something very similar to this. We're just gonna set the token equal to this token value that we've got up here. And now that we've got that set, we're gonna say Python and then main.py and it's saying that guild object has no attribute text in the help.cog function and it's on line 26. Oh, it was not meant to be .text, it was just meant to say text channels. Let's try to run it again, see if that fixed it. Everything seems okay for now, so let's go to the general. Okay, we've got all of the commands displaying over here, so let's try to play something. 
I'm going to play this no copyright free music that I tried earlier to make sure I don't get banned on YouTube. So we're in a voice channel, hopefully it should join us. It does not. But there we go, we've got an error message right here. There we go, how to little spelling error right there. Let's try to run it again and play the song once more. There we go, it joined our Discord channel, but it doesn't seem to be playing. Aha, I found where the error was. So in the FFmpeg options, this seems to be very sensitive. It's not gonna give you any error, but in here, instead of reconnected, it's meant to say reconnect streamed. And now if we actually run the bot, we can see it's displaying all of the help messages and I'm just gonna Make it join the channel, and there you go. It started playing the music fine, and we can of course add more music to the queue. You can see the song's been added to the queue. We can look at the queue. We can skip the current music. So now we've got no more music in the queue, and it's still playing. And then finally we can tell it to leave because we don't like it anymore and you can see it left the channel. One thing I found is sometimes despite adding your FFmpeg path to the environment variables, it might still not have it in the path when you open it up in the terminal. What you have to do is if it gives you some errors about FFmpeg, you can set your path equal to whatever the path currently is and then just append the path to your FFmpeg bin folder over here like so, and then when you run Python main.py, you shouldn't be getting any more errors. Lastly, I did put all of this up on GitHub, so if you wanna download the code and not have to go through all of this on your own, you can download it from here, or if you just wanna run the Discord music bot, there is actually a Docker image that you can download and you, you can run it with just one command. I might make a video on this later explaining exactly how you could run this with Docker and just how simple it is to do. Uh, but other than that, I'll see you in the next one.